Well played, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. He's not doing badly, is he? 12 goals this season, 10 in his last 11 for Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, helping Arsenal to victory here over Burnley. Bakary Sanyo is our special guest here this afternoon. If it wasn't always pretty from Arsenal today, how important was the outcome, Bakary, in the end? Well, it's vital. They got the, the win at the end, they got the three points, and they knew it was not going to be easy against Burnley. I think Burnley deserve to, to play the way they did. We can give them some credit and because they managed to put Arsenal under pressure until the end of the game. But Arsenal had the right, right uh, reaction after they conceded the, the second goal, the first goal, sorry, and uh, they, they kept playing to, to kill the game and they did. What did you like about the Arsenal performance? The way they, they reacted after conceding. Uh, it was a bit difficult moment for them, but uh, in the old days they would have maybe scared, been scared of, uh, of playing. They would have maybe played long balls, but they managed to, to, to play and keep playing together and they managed to make the transition quite, quite, quite quickly, like they did on the first goal. And, and yeah, I think they improved not only on the pitch, but uh, mentally also. Was the reaction important, Alex, after a, a difficult week for them? Yeah, they needed this going in because I suppose when the managers come in, he knows top four is the aim. That's the main thing to get back in Champions League this season. So they needed that win today. And they did. They found themselves in new territory today, going in at the break, leading. So mentally, that's a different challenge for them, especially when Burnley get back in the game. It can go two or ways. Burnley can carry on that momentum or Arsenal have to find the mental strength to be like, OK, we're not going to panic. We're going to stay in this game. And they did. They managed to then get that third goal. Ozil was um, in the spotlight certainly before the game. How did he do? <laughs> well, this is what he was brought back in the team for today to do, to break down, to pick out those passes and get back assisting players. And this is what we all know Ozil is great at. If players make the run, he will find you. And that is an exquisite pass. And Kolasinac had a great game, put it back in the area, but it all comes from Ozil seeing that run, first of all. Yeah, is that the key thing? Is it the vision, Bakary, that, that Mesut Ozil possesses in those tight situations? Yeah, in little spaces in the last third, he's able to, to play the right ball, and he did on the first goal. It's a perfect example. Whenever the, the area is full of players, he managed to, to find the right tempo to play the good ball and, and to find other players, and that's why he's, he's a top-class player. What have you spotted on that goal, James? Uh, listen, the guys have summed it up lovely because Ozil's pass is exquisite. But I just want to look at it from Burnley's point of view. And I always feel, you know, when you're going away from home, the first goal is obviously key. And, you, and the last thing you want to do is concede it in the manner in which they do. Arsenal worked the ball really well. But there's two players I want to concentrate on. And one is obviously the, the goal scorer. And he's made a move just here. There he is. There's a Yang. And marking him is Kevin Long. In that situation, you say that there's no real danger. Even, even the pass that Mesut plays, there's still so many Burnley players that you can see in the positions, and they're in good positions. But as that ball then gets played, just keep your eye on these two players, because as they turn, you can see that Kevin Long is marking him. All of a sudden, he just sleeps that fraction of a second. He doesn't react, and it's a poor piece of defending. And they, listen, they do get a little bit lucky, Arsenal. We're going to slow this right down, because it falls to him. As he strikes it, you might say good strikers finish, but look, it hits him on the shin, on the corner of the shin, and it could have gone anywhere. And you've got players there, Tarkovsky's in front of him, you've got the goalkeeper as well, but it just falls. And when your luck's out, that's what happens, you know, and it's just unlucky from their point of view. But I, Kevin Long, apart from that, defended really well. But that one moment, you know what it's like as a defender, we've all done it, but he just watches the ball, that split second, you've got to get in, you've got to follow it. If he tracks the runner, it doesn't happen. Was it a lucky finish? Well, <laughs> I think he wanted to try to hit the ball a bit better, but he's a striker and, you know, he needs that kind of luck. And obviously, it's Aubameyang has been outstanding since he came here and, and I think he's totally deserved. Was that second goal, though, Alex, almost classic Arsenal counter-attack? Yeah, especially because they defended well. I think actually some credit to um, El Nani who came in and he really broke down play for Arsenal in there before he came off and he does it here. He breaks it down and then sh literally it's important to get that ball away from that space, that ball to Guendouzi in here. And that's a great ball into areas and classic counter-attack from Arsenal. And Lacazette as well here, it's finding the right pass at the right time. And then this guy, the form that he's shown all season, it does get a deflection. But like he said, he knows when he's in that area, all he's thinking is about getting his shot off straight away. It's just clinical. He gets the ball and he already made his decision. He could have tried to play Lacazette 
in, on the back pass, but the striker and the striker has to be selfish. And you see, you know what he's, he's trying to do, and he turned up in a goal. So is he the world-class striker that Arsenal have been missing really since Thierry Henry was here? I wouldn't say world-class at the minute, but he's getting there slowly. And if he keeps going this way, I think he's, he's going to be even better and better. And uh, he's going to bring the team up. Arsenal definitely need a, a striker like him. And I think he's, he's getting better and better. But they've had Van Persie since as well. They've, had, they've never had a problem scoring goals. I don't know what you think, Bakri, but the midfield, I always feel, from Arsenal these last few years has been a bit of a problem. Now they've got Torreira and players like that can get around the pitch. Gunduzi, they look a bit more, they've got more legs in the midfield area, which obviously helps Mesut Ozil. Yes, I think uh, Mesut had a, a bit too much pressure on him. Now we can see if one, let, let's say, Gunduzi goes out, Torreira can play and Torreira has, has, has brought a lot to the team and some quality in the, mid, in the, midfield, in the midfield. sorry, and, uh, and yeah, that's what Arsenal needed, a bit of length in the squad and they have it. So hopefully they're going to sort out the, the defence problem and I think they can be a good contender. I think that's the thing as well. It's not relying on one player, like you said, the pressure on Mesut Ozil to come in and be that player all the time. It's about having collective character in your team. That's what's vital to get that success. And I think that's what Emery coming in is trying to build in his team. Not just one superstar. We need everybody. There'll be a lot, there'll be a lot of talk about Mesut today, Alex, wasn't there? And how he, I thought he was great today. I thought he played really well, influential. He worked extremely hard. You know, we said it before the game that he's never going to chase back. He's never, that's not what he does. He needs to do it more. There's no reason why he can't. He's got good energy to do that. But some of his bits of play and some of his passing was you know, fantastic. Slightly different approach to the game, I suppose, from Ashley Barnes. As Kratis talked about, the physical yeah. battle that he seemed to relish playing up there. What did you make of his, his afternoon, Jamie? On the right side of the line? He always plays on the edge. You know, but there, there's an argument to say this is what Burnley need a bit of spirit. Not so much this. But they're going to need someone that's going to chase lost causes, make a nuisance of himself. That's what he does. You know, that one there, he could got booked, you know, some might say uh, Socrates could have got booked as well. I mean, this is the end of the first half. He was wronged here. Wrong, definitely, that's, that's the booking. But even then, he wants to react, he's got to be careful. <laughs> you know, he's always on the edge. <coughs> yeah, this is another one again, Doozy. Goes for the ball, but the referee's angle looks com might look completely different. Look at this now, this is what the referee's seeing. He's seeing maybe that he's treading on his chest. He obviously isn't, but that's the sort of, that's the line that he nearly crosses. And, you know, thankfully he got an important goal for them. But players like that, that's what you get in the Premier League, isn't it, all the time? Gave his team a lifeline as well, didn't he, Bakary? Yes, I think he, he's, he's done a great, great job. He had a good game and unfortunately his team lost. But uh, I think he's trying to fight and show the right example. He's trying to lead and, and tell his teammates, come on, let's go, we can make it. And, yeah, you can see on, on his goal, he, he, stay, he stayed alive. He, he managed to, to, to score, that's what everyone expects from him, but uh, apart from this, he tried to show the, the right example, the right attitude as a player. It's was the it? Premier League goal of the season, he certainly didn't cut a, a happiest of figures throughout the afternoon. Let's um, hear what he